Hi, my name is Jonathan Kochuk, and I'm a composer and sound artist. So I really like to use sound particles for making music. And one thing that it does really well, I think, is making big, rich choir sounds when maybe you don't have access to a big, rich choir, perhaps like now. So I start off by using a, a Battlefield preset. So let's just go ahead and uh, apply that track preset again, just for the sake of doing it. And you'll notice if we just sort of toggle through the timeline, we have a really thick texture here in uh, what is a pretty huge area of, of square with a thousand particles. So let's just load in some audio samples and see what happens. Now to make a choir, you can do a lot of things. Uh, like a cooking show, I've sort of prepared some audio samples to fill in here. I made a bunch of sampling instruments with some friends who are vocalists. And so I have a bunch of them just singing straight notes, um, you know, C sharp four, just straight for, for 10 seconds. But it's really fun to experiment with people improvising or whatever. But for this purpose, let's just make a, uh, a D major seven chord. That'll be funky. So I guess we'll do it in an inversion just for fun. Again, if this isn't your thing, you can just throw in audio and see what happens. Uh, and, and sometimes you get some really beautiful results, but I'm, I'm looking for a specific chord. So I'm just gonna throw in a bunch of audio that I have ready made. And each of these audio files is gonna be its own note. Let's play one just to see what I mean. All right. So we're gonna have a lot of those, and we're gonna have four different, uh, I guess, notes in the scale to make our chord. So I'm gonna go ahead and render a little bit of that just to see what it sounds like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that render, and we can see we have a little bit here. Let's see what that sounds like. I already know, heads up. And that is not what we we're looking for. So what's going on? What's wrong here? Well, you gotta remember, we're dealing with a setting here, Battlefield, that's meant for audio, not music. So let's go down to our audio modifiers here. Random gain, that's good. Random delay, that's good. Random time pitch, that works really well for audio if we were trying to make a big, thick Battlefield texture. You know, you have some low gunshots and some high gunshots and explosions, but it doesn't work really well for music, especially when we're trying to keep uh, a specific chord. So I'm gonna go check that off. Another thing that's a little bit uh, unchoir like dare I say, is the shape. So we have some performers, so to speak, standing really close to us and some very, very far away from us. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the shape here to maybe, hmm, what would be nice? Let's try a torus to start off with. We can have maybe a choir all around us, like maybe some sort of uh, happening performance or what have you. And we have a thousand people, that's a little bit much. Sometimes the textures get so thick that it doesn't necessarily sound realistic. It sounds a little bit synthetic. So I'm just gonna say we have a hundred people, see what happens there. And uh, maybe I'll make our radius, section radius a little bit more sparse. So we can just toggle through here and see what's going on. That would be a nice sort of tinkling cloud feel for the choir. I'm going to modify that a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Now, if we want to make it very realistic instead of all around us, we are just doing this in stereo after all. Maybe we can make a rectangle and we can position it in front of the microphone. We can pull the mic back a little bit. Let's try this Taurus though. That seems fun. And I'll go ahead and render a little bit of that. See if there's any difference. You can already tell I don't even need to stop the video because we have only a hundred particles. It's pretty easy for the computer to render that many. A thousand is, is way too many. So let's go ahead and play that. So now that I know that we're kind of on the right track, I rendered out just a little bit of uh, my choir. Basically what I want to do is I want to go through and make sure that I have stems of each different section, of each different note, so to speak. So I'm going to take my battlefield example here, and I know that that works, so I'm gonna duplicate it, 
couple times. There we go. And inside each of these, I'm going to delete what I have in there. And you know what? I probably should have deleted it at the beginning, so I didn't duplicate all this stuff, but it's quick. Next, I'm going to duplicate these mic systems. Great. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start naming these. So I want to make sure that this is my lowest note, for example. So with F sharp three, and then this one is going to be, I think that's going to be B three. And this next one is going to be C sharp four. And then D four. Great. I'm just going to name these accordingly too, because I want each of these mics to correspond to one of these groups. And that's how we're kind of going to stem it out. Okay, great. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to unselect all of them and select the corresponding group just so that each mic track is only rendering one of the groups. We're kind of stemming it out that way. One mic track for each group. Great. I'm just going to click through these to check. Fantastic. Next, and very importantly, basically all of these are using the same distribution of particles. And I want them all to be different. So I'm going to go in here on each of these groups, and I'm going to regenerate these particles. And this is going to be lush. Now, we're going to have four times the singers here. So if you like, you can go to in each of these groups and you can say, hey, I only want 25 particles. And that's going to get us around the same amount as when we threw all the sections in one group. I'm going to do that. Great. Now we're down to 100 singers again instead of 400. All right, so now I actually have to populate these groups with audio. So I'm going to drag in all my F sharp 3 audio onto my F sharp 3 group. I'm going to do the same with B3. Grab that over here. C sharp 4, same deal. and D4. Great, now it's ready to go. But I don't want to use this render. I'm going to use batch rendering. And batch rendering is going to be better in this case since we're going into a DAW, only because I can use this recreate particles for each run option. And I could do all of this four times. And remember when we were going through each group, and we are kind of regenerating particles here. Well, it's going to do that every time it runs. So I'm going to get four runs of four different versions of each group, which is a lot of different versions. And it's going to allow me to um, mix and match, make things thicker without worrying about phasing or things seeming like they're a copy. I also like to add the suffix to exported files out. I think that's nice. Save a copy of each project file. Yep, if there's something magical that happens, I can go back into that project file. And I'm going to save a master with all the renders just because on the desktop. So let's go and uh, run that batch now. All right, so I've added each of those runs into Ableton, but you can use any DAW for sure. Um, we have all our four F sharp runs, B, C, and D, C sharp rather. And uh, I added a little reverb and nothing else, and it uh, sounds like this.
All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope that helps and we'll see you next time.